we're using a technology that produces a consistent high quality product with low impurities. The battery makers want and need that. Welcome to the NEI 500 CEO interview program, where the senior management from select listed companies will share their insights with the audience about the company's growth potential. In this episode, we had the opportunity to speak to Steve Prominence, the managing director of Lake Resources, an ASX listed company with a trading symbol of LKG. Lake Resources is a Livium development company focused in Argentina. A few highlights our readers should know before watching the interview. Lake Resources' flagship project, Kachi, is a lithium brine project that produces high-purity lithium carbonate. Kachi is located in the Livium Triangle, the prime location in the world for low-cost lithium production in large scale. The project has more ESG benefit by using a benign water treatment process comparing to other conventional brine evaporation pond process or hard rock mining. The company also has a few other exploration projects with great upside potential. The stock has recently risen since January when they announced the beginning of the DFS for the Kachi project from 8 cents up to as high as 48 cents and now settling around the 30 to 35 cent range. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content. Hi, Steve. Uh, maybe you can start by just giving us a, a bit of a background and overview about your company, Lake Resources. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, so my name is Steve Prominence. I'm the Managing Director of Lake Resources, and we've been focused on lithium for the last five years. And our approach has been to deliver a very high quality lithium, which is what battery makers want, and to do that in a more sustainable way with a much smaller environmental footprint which is what battery makers want. And to do that, we're using a clean technology, which is called direct extraction. And so uh, as opposed to uh, other companies in the sector that are using traditional methods, this is relatively new for, for the lithium space, but it's a very well-known water treatment method been around for more than 70 years, just adapted for lithium. And so uh, we are now in the detailed feasibility study stage and we aim to be uh, completing construction finance around this time next year. And so then to be in production in uh, the start of 2024, early 2023. Well, just coming on very soon. So let's, let's talk a bit more about your, your uh, flagship project here, a bit more details. So when we talk about Livium mine, usually the technology, the extraction process can be quite tricky. Maybe you can tell us more about the, the technology that you earlier mentioned. First of all, we're about providing high quality lithium to battery makers, but I have to uh, comment that we're not in mining. Um, we are in the mining sector because it's lithium, we put in extractive, um, uh, extractive solutions, but uh, we just use water treatment. And you're absolutely right. Any new technology has a relevant amount of risk. And the only way to diminish that is to do lots of test work. Uh, so we, uh, moved into lithium and put these projects together about five years ago in Argentina. And then about three and a half years ago, we started focusing on direct extraction techniques and pretty much since that time been doing test work. Then um, initially at a bench top level for the last year, it's, um, it's coming up March. So that'll be one year that the pilot plant has been running in California. And uh, this calendar year, the latter part of this calendar year, we're going to actually going to put a demonstration plant on site. One of the good things about treating water as opposed to perhaps digging a hole is that when you dig a hole, the type of geology and the type of chemistry of a mineral at one end of a pit might be different to the other. But when in these very large salt lake basins, these things are 25, 50 kilometers long, 15 kilometers wide, 800, 1,000, 1,200 meters deep. Because it's water and salt water that sits underneath them, the water is fairly consistent. And so what we do in one place is going to be pretty much the same as another. And one of the beauties of our test work to date is that what we do in one or two modules in California, and we'll be doing in a few modules on site, is the same as when we go into production at uh, using 50 of these modules. 
So it's one of the ways where we ameliorate the risk of uh, using new technology and actually at the forefront. Moreover, I would say that there's a real risk in, in technologies that are currently in the, in the uh, industry. Um, in Chile and Argentina, where 40, 45% of the lithium comes from, they just evaporate the water away and concentrate the salts. Now, there's nothing particularly wrong with that, but um, it's not the greatest environmental outcome. And the other hard rock, when you dig a hole in the ground, that then has to be roasted at about a thousand degrees to convert it into hydroxide. So both of these are at least very energy uh, intensive. And the EU in their demands now for new batteries want to see a low CO2 footprint. And that's where we really tick the box. Really interesting. You also mentioned you have a strong ESG component to your plan operation. So you mentioned a bit earlier there uh, in your last question, maybe you can uh, tell us a bit more in, in details. Yeah. Um, so uh, as I'm sure uh, your viewers are aware, there's not just been interest across the globe in more environmentally sensitive outcomes. Uh, and uh, this is across the globe. I mean, we've seen a, a big push in, uh, in China, for example, as well as in the EU on these sorts of things. What's been interesting here is that we can deliver a product of a consistent quality. And the way we do that is that we pump this um, brine, this salty water out from underneath a salt lake. And then we just extract the lithium out. And using this method called ion exchange, there's no chemicals involved. And so because we just take the lithium out of the water, which is less than 1%, then we can return almost 99% of that water back to its source. So instead of seeing it all evaporate away into the atmosphere, we actually return it back to its aquifer. So that's a good outcome from water usage. And the second thing is that when you use evaporation ponds, they can extend across the horizon. We're talking 15, 20 square kilometers. Whereas here, our physical footprint is about the size of one or two city blocks. It's just the processing plant. And then the third thing is that uh, we are having detailed conversations about putting a solar hybrid power supply at the processing plant. So most of our power will actually come from the sun. And I have to say where we're located in, in the high Andes in Argentina, there's certainly no problem with sunlight during the day uh, together with the battery backup. And so that will then uh, produce a small CO2 footprint. So this is, a, this is a very good outcome. Now, I suspect that as the industry develops, we might even see more participants doing that. We're just at the absolute vanguard of leading that charge. This is great to hear uh, for the people who are following that ESG trend here around the globe. So you mentioned that uh, in a few years, so potentially uh, Catchy Project will go become a mine. So what's your pathway to production there? Maybe you can tell us a bit about uh, uh, your story there. Are you well funded to production? So the good news is that we did a capital raising in January uh, 2020, and we're funded right through to the construction finance round, which is the middle of next year. And on the back of that, then uh, complete the project finance to be in production the first half of 2024. The earliest is late 2023. Um, what we've done prior to that is we've defined a resource in 2018. We demonstrated uh, on the back of that resource using the test work with direct extraction, a pre-feasibility study. We released that in April 2020. It was very robust. We then demonstrated a very high purity product in uh, October 2020 and in February, March, we demonstrated that works very efficiently in a, in a battery cell, a 622, thanks to our partner Novonix. And so now, um, now that we're funded for that next 18 months, we can actually go and finish all these studies uh, and complete that project financing round and then get underway. Now, quite often investors are concerned about how a relatively small company, I mean, we're only about 250 million US in market value, how a relatively small company can actually source a 400 million US of debt. But I must say the intermediaries we appointed just recently have been working with export credit agencies for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the benefit of that sort of quasi government funding is it uh, lasts for a longer duration. It's a, a cheaper price and it gives this sort of semi-government seal of approval, which then supports the robust financials. It's a pretty exciting period. And between now and when we get into construction finance, we've got a lot of news coming down the pipe as well. It's good to hear. So let's draw our attention to some of your other projects in the region. Uh, you have a few uh, exploration projects in the region. So 
are you planning to do any of the work um, for these projects? That is an excellent question, and thank you for asking. Uh, last year, uh, 2020, was, it was a little bit quiet in our sector and globally due to the global pandemic. Um, however, there continued to be growth in electric vehicle demand and growth in battery plants. And so there is this burgeoning growth now for lithium. Let me try and quantify that. So that growth over the next 10 years is going to be somewhere between five to 18 times more production than what we had last year. That's, um, that's like creating a large lithium company, uh, a number of them every year for the next 10 years. So what that has done is that uh, people in the supply chain, key battery makers, car makers have come to us and others saying, can you increase production at your catchy project? Can you project, increase it from say 25,000 tons to 50,000 tons? Yes. And so we're looking at ways we can do that. Do you have other projects? We're very fortunate that we've got three other projects. One of them, Kalchari, is actually uh, very nicely located right next to uh, Geng Fung and Lithium Americas who are going into production at the latter part of this year, moving to 40,000 tons per annum. So we'll be putting out news about accelerating some of the uh, exploration, testing and development on that, where we'll be testing the brines, also using direct extraction. I mean, it's quite possible that in 10 years time, uh, we could have you know, two or three of these projects going. Uh, admittedly, not all at once we will stage development. You do the one and then you'll expand one and move on to the next one. But each of those could have different partners. It's, um, we're almost uniquely positioned to both have a number of different projects that we own and a technology that is readily scalable to produce just the product that the actual market wants. Mm. So in some way, wh why should investors uh, continue to follow your, your company and what kind of milestones or catalysts of news that you have in store in the next uh, 12 months? Uh, thank you, Gilbert. So uh, first of all, the, the macro view for the sector shows this growth in electric vehicles and in batteries, and that's going to need more lithium supply. Mm -hmm. So as an investor, if you're looking uh, to invest in, in lithium, I think that's a reasonable bet in the, both the short and the medium term. Uh, to that end, we saw pricing pick up about 10% in November, December, and then we've seen it spike nearly 40% in January, February, for spot pricing for lithium carbonate in China. So that is a fair indication that um, many of the companies that are looking like they're going into production or expanding will probably get financed and they're probably a good bet to invest in. All right, but given that, why would you look at Lake? Why would Lake be somehow better than others? And why would you pick Lake instead of perhaps a producer? And the reasons are simply this. We're one of the very few companies that's got a number of projects that can be developed. We'll be coming up with news showing how we can double production at our flagship project, Kachi, and then develop others. We're using a technology that produces a consistent high quality product with low impurities. The battery makers want and need that. And why? That's to avoid any performance issues. We had all these recalls of Chevy Bolts and Hyundai Konas at the end of 2020. And they were around battery issues. And then last of all, this demand from electric vehicle makers for a better ESG outcome, a smaller environmental footprint. They have to report and audit their entire supply chain. They need to say to their consumers, when you're gonna buy my electric vehicle, I'm also gonna be um, having good outcomes as well. And so we tick all of those three boxes. And if you look across both current production and uh, people coming onto the market, there's very few that are gonna be able to do that. Um, so we've had a spike recently in our share price uh, in January, February, and investors could say, oh, am I too late? You know, it's gone up. To be brutally honest, that was just catch up with our peers. Now that we've got fully funded in January, we can actually deliver the things. And I think you're going to see a lot coming out of um, this uh, company in news. So what does that news look like? Yes, we'll finish our definitive feasibility study by the first quarter next year. But that doesn't really move the dial that much. It's important because that's how we then finalize the finance and move into production. But the news to be looking out for will be how we can expand our projects, how we can develop the next project, who we're going to be working with. These are household names, electric vehicles and the battery supply chain. I can't talk about them yet, 
but we want at least one of them to sign something we can release to the market and announce. You're going to see more about how our product works in batteries, news from Novonics. In the latter part of this year, we'll have our demonstration plant uh, operating on site. So equity investors, debt investors will be able to come and actually touch the thing, seeing it operating on site. And I think that will then quell the concerns about new technology and uh, positions this company then with the project financing we're putting in place to then get underway into construction and into production. And once we've done that on the first one, I think that will also ameliorate investor and debt provider concerns that we can move on to the next one. So it looks like Nick Resources is an exciting story to follow if investors are also following the growing demands of the EVs market. So thank you, Steve, for being here with us and sharing your story with us so with our audience. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Gilbert. And uh, please, if you need more information, our website is lakeresources.com.au. We've got to put the AU at the end because we are ASX listed. Or you can email me directly at steve, S-T-E-V-E, at lakeresources.com.au. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content.